I want to look at using Affinity Photo in conjunction with other apps or programs to make a watercolour type picture. Now this is the original picture that I'm going to start with. I got this from pixabay.com and I will add a link to this in the description for this video. Now I've made three different versions of this. This is the first one I did which I used using Filter Forge. I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute. This next one, there's a slight variation. This time I used a Kivis airbrush. And this last one was using a program called Photo Sketcher. So I will look at each one, and the results can vary depending on which filter you use in each of these programs and obviously the backgrounds are different because I've used different brushes each time so even this next one I'm going to make will end up looking different in some way because I won't get the, the maybe the filters the same or the brushes the same but this is the effects we are looking for so first let's have a look at these three programs now filter forge you can get a trial version and it's up to version 7 at the moment and currently there is a discount and you can download it for Windows or Mac OS um, but you do have to pay for this but this is probably the best filter substitute program out there um, so if you're going to use filters a lot and considering that Affinity Photo at this present time really has next to nothing in the way of filters, this will be a good way to go and it works as a plug-in into Affinity Photo. So that's it. Oh, again, I will add a link to all three of these in the description for this video. The next one is Akivis. I think that's how you pronounce that. Um, now this is the airbrush option they make lots of various um, plugins and this does work as a plugin in Affinity Photo it's not listed amongst the official plugins that I've seen although many of uh, Akivis's plugins are listed but they do say they have some minor issues working in Affinity Photo but so far I've used Airbrush in Affinity Photo without any real noticeable effects um, as far as I can see so far um, so again this is one that you can order a free trial and basically you end up you can pay for it it's uh, $49 so you know it is an expensive way around this but you can get Mac versions and Windows versions or you can get a 10 day trial right, this last one is Photo Sketcher now this is a 100% free program but it doesn't um, work as a plugin it's a standalone program um, and if I come to the where is it about here it says it works with Windows XP and all the other Windows versions and there is also an experimental VAC Mac version available so if I come to the download page you can download the full version it says portable version so I'm guessing it may work on um, tablets that have Windows I really don't know and then there's also a link here for the Mac users to try the um, the newer Mac demo version but it is for free I mean you can donate to help the cost and what have you but for something that is free it is well worth downloading and trying just for the fun of it so I will again add the link to this in my description so coming back to Affinity Photo 
So I'm going to try and re replicate this image or these images once more. And let's come back to I don't need those others anymore. I will come back to this image here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to select the image. Um, for quickness and speed, I'm just going to use the selection brush tool. Let me just increase the brush size. Uh, make sure I'm on add, always helps. I think that's pretty much got all that I need there. I'll just do a very quick subtract. Another brush size down. Alright, I'll press Ctrl and zero to come out. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Ctrl and J and that will duplicate that cutout area. If I turn the background off, as you can see, it is just the background area. And now I can press Ctrl and D to get rid of the selection area. And what I'm also going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer um, because I'm going to use the same document to hopefully demonstrate the different filters. So I'm going to hide that top one and I'm going to, I will be working on this one for now. So actually what does, I'll rename this one Filter Forge and I'll rename that one Um, I don't know, I key this, I think that's how you sp I key this and then hide that one. Right. So, I now want a sort of background splurges of watercolour. So, I'm going to highlight the bottom layer and I'm going to add a pixel layer and I'm going to change the blending mode of this to average and I'm going to come to the paintbrush tool black is the foreground color and there's you can use whatever brush tips you like there's plenty out there um, as you can see, I mean, I've got loads which I've downloaded over the time. Um, I think there is a painting one that comes standard with Affinity Photo, and I believe some of these daub ones. And there's also a daub watercolors options here. One I downloaded was BB Watercolor 2 CS. I must admit, I can't remember where I got it from now, but and this is one of the brushes I'm going to use. Now, because it's on average, and it is behind the the layer with a girl on it, it's not going to affect the girl. So I'm just going to put a few of those around, and then I'm going to pick a different brush tip. Let's try that one. Right, let's try some of these daub watercolour ones. Let's try that one. Increase the size. Right, pick a different one. So I mean every time I've done this it will come obviously it will come out different because I'm using different brushes in different ways in different places so right let's try I'm I know I've got another watercolour set down here we we'll try this one see what that one's like increase the size a bit so 
So you can sort of make this in any sort of pattern that you want and add as much or as little as you want. I'll leave that one like that. So that is the last I'm going to be using of the brush on this particular layer. So I'm now going to come to the what I named Filter Forge layer, which if you remember just has the girl on it. And I'm going to no, I have installed this as a plugin. You can do it as a standalone program and or a plugin, but I'll come to filters, plugins, filter forge, filter forge seven, and this will open up filter forge. And like I said, there are this is probably the best option for filters in as far as Affinity Photo is concerned because there are sort of I think there's hundreds of thousands of options like this particular one which I have sele already selected which is water contour I mean you can if you haven't got it already as part of the default program you can download them you can download loads of them but this particular one has like nine variations I'm just going to go with the default option which will give me this image here so I'll just click apply then you just have to wait a little while while Filter Force does its stuff and brings that image back into Affinity Photo. Right, I did pause that um, recording of that for a little while. It probably took about a minute, minute and a half to process that and make this into this drawing here. Um, now I just want to add a Gaussian blur to this I'm, but I'm going to do it as a live layer rather than just as a filter so I'm going to come up to layer, new live layer, Gaussian blur filter. I'm doing it this way so I can sort of tinker with the blurring later if I need to. If I remember rightly I had this up to about 6 roughly Let's go to 5.9 just to sort of lose that sharpness and help blend that in a bit more. So what I want to do now is highlight that grouping and then click on add a pixel layer and this time I'm going to drag this down and make it part of that group there so that hopefully you can see this blue line only comes as far as the icon so that is now part of this group so if I come to the paintbrush tool and let's pick a different brush and let's try that one just increase the size and this should still be on black. I mean, you probably could do it in other colours, but I, I quite like the black version. Let me just tone that down slightly to make the opacity about 40%. There we go. So, now also, I'm going to change the blending mode. Now, you could use whatever blending mode you like, in which you could have done also for the background, but I found that Reflect worked quite well. It just sort of, see now I can increase that opacity a bit. Let's go up to 75%. You can just sort of see that effect happening on the image. So let's pick a different brush again. Let's try one of these. Just to add a bit of texture. Let's another one increase the size a bit so right I'll, that will do for that I think you get the idea you can help bring back some of the sh um, sort of detail by just brushing over it with the paintbrush and help blend that into the background so that is the 
filter falls version sort of sorted out so let me hide that layer and I will bring back this top layer which I had named Akivis and just come off that tool for a second so again I'm now going to use the plugin for this because like I said it does work in Affinity Photo so I'll come down to plugins Akivis and then airbrush so again like the filter falls you just have to wait for it to open up now in this program you have this little sort of um, little box that will, dem will show you what it looks like underneath with the particular filter that is selected you do also have the before and after image where it will actually show you the whole image but you just need to wait for that to be processed so let me go back to the before now it's just a case of finding a filter that you like the look of now there are a whole list of presets you've got the preset button here and you've got the menu and as you can see there's all sorts of different presets and then down here it gives you a very quick idea of what that will look like there is a watercolor option here but it does only come out in one color so I'm going to go with the tempera which will still keep a bit of color and then if I just click on the after it will just do that in the a better demonstration of what that looks like I'm happy with that and then I just need to click on this tick to apply um, and then that has already put that into Affinity Photo a lot quicker than Filter Forge probably because it's a sort of a less fussy filter maybe I don't really know but we're just going to basically do the same thing like I did before I'm going to come to layer uh, new live filter Gaussian blur and then just increase this maybe not as high as six for this particular one somewhere around the four four and a half mark that's a bit better I think add the pixel layer and then click and drag this down into the group so it is the pixel layer that will also it will only affect this group again I'm going to change the blend mode to reflect pick a paintbrush and we should still be on black yes we are and then just paint over the image now it's not really showing up as much in the darker areas than it did on the filter forge version so it might be a case of maybe trying a different blend mode um, see not all of these work too well Um, I must admit I think I still prefer the reflect it may not affect the black area so much but I do f like the the way it uh, basically affects the image All right let's try one more brush let's try let's go back to the BB wherever it was it's here somewhere oh, I'll go with the dual port color ones and we'll try that one right probably not as good as the 
filter forward version and I could tinker around with the opacity or the blending modes and maybe get a better look but if I hide that one and bring back that one I still think that is a better version so what I'll do now is I'll hide that and I'll hide that layer as well for now and going on to the photo sketcher version now for this I'm going to need a image outside of affinity photo um, so what I did do previously it was I selected the girl like I did before saved it as a PNG and then I used the PNG in photo sketcher so let me just drop this down I can get rid of these now and come to the photo sketcher program just wait for that to open and then I just need to open the image that I saved which is I think it's that one there, yes, PNG file, and then click open. Just wait for that to load in. And what you have here is your, your start image, and over here will be the image once you click draw. Again, you have a drop down menu which has all sort of, you know, pencil sketches. And as you can see, going down the right, there is a rough representation of what it may look like using that particular brush, be it you know, watercolours or other effects, pen and ink sketching. Um, so I'm going to go with the watercolour. Now, normally you do get a, um, a representation in here of what this particular image will look like. Um, I don't know quite why it's not working on this particular image maybe because it's a PNG or there's just so much white there and it can't find the image, I don't know but I'm going to leave that on watercolour and then just click draw then you just have to wait while the program draws that image on the other side it does take a while so and you see you've got this yellow bar going across the bottom that will show you its progress so i will pause the video and wait for this to finish and then be back right the program has finished drawing that as you can see we've now got the watercolor version i mean if you don't like that you can always try a different one but I'm now going to save that so you can just click on save drawing and then it will save it in whichever format you want I think it saves in JPEG and PNG I have already saved mine previously so I'm not going to bother going through that but that is how you would do that so let me just exit this program and come back to this image and then I will open the version I saved previously which is that one and all I now need to do is also, again I just need to lose this white background so I'm going to again use the selection brush well, on subtract oh, I keep ending up on subtract pretty much everything there just do a very quick subtract of that area in there like so and then press ctrl and j 
and then I'll right click that copy come back to this image here now uh, what I want to do is to be above my um, pixel layer that has the paintbrushes on it so I'll then edit and paste that layer into there and then use the move tool just to hide the image below it may not be that perfect but it's close enough I think I mean I could also just increase the size slightly just to help hide the image below a bit better All right, well that will do for that. And then again, I'm just going to add the live Gaussian blur layer. Just to soften those edges. In fact, I could probably come a bit higher this time, maybe around the 7.8, 7.6 6 mark. Then add the pixel layer, drag it down and into that group and then like before I just need to change the blending mode of this again I'll go with reflect because I think that works quite well most of the time and then just pick a brush increase the size it's we're still on 100% opacity and then just paint over the areas that I feel that it needs it to help blend that background in a bit more let's try a different watercolour like I said you don't have to stick with the watercolour it's watercolour brush pack too let's try something from here Try that one. Right. Now I might just turn down the opacity of that overall grouping for that particular one. Right, I think that will do. It does demonstrate the free programs that work either in or alongside Affinity Photo, be it Photo Sketcher, um, Akivis Paint, or Air Paint, or Filter Forge. So you have the three different possibilities using the same image. So hopefully in some later date, maybe when Affinity Photo gets to version 2 or version 3, Serif will actually add in some decent filters that will save us having to use outside programs. But for now, if you want to do something like this, you will need an outside program or plugin to help you achieve that effect, at least for someone of my ability anyway. So thank you for watching. And goodbye.